Hello folks, welcome to this channel. So today I'm going to quickly be talking about a new terminal I've been playing around with. And that terminal is WAP. So you may be wondering, well, what is WAP? Well, WAP is a Rust based terminal that's reimagined with AI, just like the website says here. Um, however, there's some really, really cool features I think it has that the website doesn't really do justice to. So if you've probably gotten tired of your old uh, terminal that you've been playing around with, you a recent improvement in AI, this is very, very timely to have uh, something like this. So quickly before we dive into it, um, let's just talk about WAP and what it's built on for a minute. So WAP is built on Rust. And for those who don't know, Rust is an incredibly fast uh, language and many actually argue that it's like 30% faster than Go. But I'll leave that for the data folks to make all those bank maps and actual analysis. But in general, just know that Rust is a very fast language and that's what WAP is built in. So WAP is intended to improve developer productivity. So it has a whole bunch of tools integrated within that can help you as a developer build or write code much faster. So first thing we're going to look at how to set up WAP and it's very easy to set up if you are on a Mac all you have to do. Now I already have WAP set up locally. This is my WAP terminal as you can see. But if you're on any other terminal on a Mac all you have to do to install WAP is to do brew install cask WAP and that should install WAP for you. I already have WAP installed, so this is likely going to fill and tell me I already have the app installed. Okay, the other way you can install WAP on the Mac is to just hit the download button here directly and download the DMG uh, for your operating system. And then once you install that, you have this nice WAP terminal here. So yeah, you can see it seems that I already have app installed, which is correct. I already have WAP installed. Okay, and if you're on a Linux machine, very like similarly, very similarly, you can come here and download for your Linux uh, architecture. Unfortunately, if you're on Windows, you have to wait a little bit more since WAP is still being uh, developed for Windows. It's not available yet on the Windows operating system. So, sorry folks. Okay, so now let's get into the, some of the cool features I like about WAP. Now, one of the first features I like about WAP is this minimal editor that it has. Now, this command prompt you see here, where you can type, it isn't just a prompt, it's actually a mini editor. So you can actually write, you know, minimal code in here without too much, without too much. Of course, it's not super convenient compared to what you can do in a standard IDE, but you can actually write a very minimal code in here and you can edit. So what I mean by minimal editor is you can actually click around something you won't ordinarily be able to do in a standard uh, terminal. You can click around and edit code anywhere, um, just like you would do in your in your uh, terminal, which is cool. And then one other feature about WAP that I find compelling is smart command completions. So for example, like what I'm trying to do, say I'm trying to read files in, you can see it's giving me suggestions for what it thinks I want which is auto completion feature and it's not always accurate is what I've noticed, but it depends on the context you give it. For example, from writing a git command, you can see it's already suggesting all the different options that I may need. Okay. Origin and it's knows all the branches that I have and it can pop those up automatically for me and I can choose the one I want. Okay. Now, I don't have to install any extensions. Ordinarily, if you want to do this in like VS Code or a standard Mac uh, terminal, you have to install an extension to be able to have maybe bash autocomplete or something to be able to have such autocompletion in your editor, which is super cool that WAP comes with this out of the box. So no need to install additional software. The third feature I like is what's called blocks. Now, in WAP, every command that you type in and the output is known as something called a block. You see, I can actually click through all the different blocks that we have. So what kind of organizes your terminal input and output into a set of blocks that you can share and you can 
do a whole lot with, <laughs> right? So you can operate on these commands as a group. And I find that really nice because with this, you can actually search a block, which is one of the cool features it has. I'm going to talk about uh, next, which is filtering. So you can actually search for items. And one way I can show this, I guess, is say I have a whole bunch of files. Let's say I have this log, I have a whole bunch of files. So this means I have a new block created here uh, with WAP. If I want to do filtering, I can easily search through that block. Okay. And you can see it's searching through that block and finding just the entries for what I want, which is really nice. I find really handy feature and can be helpful. Now you may argue that some of the terminals already have this, which is you wouldn't be wrong for saying I use item and item also have those search you can use to search through um, a whole bunch of logs, but in WAP is just much more polished, I'll say, and, and easier to use, you know, compared to what you have in most of the terminals. And the next feature I really find compelling is the fact that you can directly share your terminal outputs, which is just awesome. Now, let's say I want to let me make a minor change to one of the files I have in here. And I'll just update my package, my package the JSON file. Okay. And let's say I update this version to 0.1.1 command X and I say Y to save. Okay. Now if I do get status, uh, I can say I have a change in the, and add all, for example, get status again. Now, the point I want to show is how you can share a block. Now, let's say I want to share this block. You can assume this is all I said it gets that. Okay. Just so I can simulate what, uh, how useful this can be. Now, let's say I type a command like git status. I want to type status, but then I typed starter, which is an error, right? So I have this error and I can't fix this locally. And I have to reach out to someone on my team to be able to resolve this issue that I'm having. One really cool feature that WAP offers that you can use is the ability to share blocks. So I can simply click on this. I'm not sure how this works, but it's really, really amazing to see. I can click on share. Okay. I can give it a title or something else I can do is just show just the command I'm typing, just the output, show the prompt as well. But I'm fine with just saying command and output at this point. And then title, I'm just going to call this error. And once I click on create link, what happens is it's going to generate a web link for me that I can actually share with my team. So someone on there can take a look at the output of this block. So now it begins to make sense to you why all of this is organized as blocks because they actually have additional functionality attached to it. So you can share this with your team. And when they click on the link, they can actually preview that block that you share with the team and they can help you troubleshoot, for example. Now, this is not an image. If you're thinking about it, I actually thought it's going to be an image the first time I had a look, but it's not an image. It's actually code. So you can actually copy the command, copy the outputs and all of that, which is super fun. It's not one of the, th the things you ideally see in in terminals so this is really cool and the next thing i want to talk about real quick is full ai integration which is an amazing thing you have in this editor which should be the first thing i talk about actually um, which i because i kind of think is the highlight of this uh terminal is the fact it has full ai integrated and you can actually use ai in all of your workflows like for example this error i'm having here okay it's saying the AI is already giving me a suggestion. It says insert suggested command git status, right? And I can just click on that and click it. And I have what I actually wanted. So in certain cases, it already does a troubleshooting for them whenever you have an error and give you the suggested correct command. However, one way you can prop prompt on the AI is to just put a hash on your terminal and that prompts up this prompt where you can enter your um, your query for what you want to do for example i want to say check new files in my git directory 
or whatever. And as soon as you hit enter, it tells you the command. For example, in this case, it's check the status of new files in the git directory. And it gives me the command. I can just click on it. It echoes that onto the prompt for me and I can hit the enter key to automatically have that. Something else you can do after hitting the uh, pound key is you can click on Axe Swap AI. So it has this nice little prompt on the side here to the right of your screen that you can actually use uh, to converse with, same way you do with ChatGPT and other AI chatbots. Okay. And I can just say, how do I rebase set git commands? Comments, right? And it just takes a while and then it prompts out some suggestions for you. Okay. And I do, I have to state that this is very, very helpful. The suggestions it prompts up are actually very, very helpful because it gives some level of detail that you ordinarily wouldn't see. So you see, it gives all the information to rebase the set git commits onto a different base. You will use git rebase i and it explains all of this command, which is very nice. So uh, what's particularly nice about this feature is the fact that I didn't have to leave my terminal to assess it. Ideally, you have to go maybe to uh, ChatGPT or Gemini or some other ch uh, AI chatbot out there. But then with this, it's directly integrated into the terminal and you can use it directly. And now the next feature I'm talking about is faster error resolution. Which we already saw above, like the error here I had, it already gave me a suggestion. But something else I can do is highlight that error and then I can right click on the block and say axe swap AI. Okay, so you can see it paste all the and you can see it paste everything in here. It even helped me formulate the prompt. Like you can see it says I ran the command. This is not something I typed. It automatically knew how to freeze the query to the AI chatbot in a way that will generate a response which is really cool and I just need to hit enter key and it shows me the correct command. Okay. So that is something really nice as well that it provides. And then the uh, last functionality or feature I'd say of WAP that I want to talk about is the WAP drive. So the WAP drive is a way for you to easily uh, share and reuse commands as templates uh, with your team. So remember I talked about how you have blocks and all of this. Now you can easily create what's called templates. So let's say you want a way for your team to be able to reuse certain commands that are used. Uh, let's say the git log one line, for example, command. I have a typo there because this is supposed to be one line, uh, for example. Now I want to make this command a WAP, a reusable workflow that my team can use. So something you can do is click on this button and just click save as workflow. Now, WAP is going to suggest a title. This is him. I don't know what to call this workflow. Based on the command, I can click on autofill and WAP will automatically suggest a title for that for me. And you see it says display git commit history in one line format, which is exactly what this command does. So that's really nice. Now, if I want to add additional arguments or parameters to so this, I can click on new argument and add all of those additional parameters, but I'm fine in this case. I don't need an additional uh, parameter. So I'm just going to go back to one line and I can click on save workflow. Now what that does is it creates a workflow for you here. So workflows are reusable templates that you can share with your team and in a later date or some other teammate that has been or some other teammate that has been added to your team can click on their workflows as well and see some of the existing workflows. So you can see WAP actually comes with some nice workflows here to do certain things. Uh, for example, under the last git commits, git head reset. If I click on that, you can see it shows me the command here and I has pasted it on my terminal prompt. So this is one way you can reuse commands and share across with your teams. And WAP also comes with the ability to create teams. So this feature is currently still in beta test, uh, but you can actually um, test it out by adding a team name and creating a team, adding, then you can send invites to your teammates, for example, and 
they can have access to your workflows as well. So that's something really nice. Uh, how I see this playing out is, uh, is that you can use this to embed teammates, for example, or yeah, or even documentation or some workflows your developers need to run. So that's basically for the features of WAP I want to talk about. Well, something else is the tabs here, as you can see, I already have them. There's something uh, item already has. You can click and create as many tabs as you want. Something else it has that's really cool is the fact that you can split your paints to multiple paints, you know, similar to what you would do with Tmux or uh, even item as, as well. So those are really cool features, but they're not novel since you have them in most other editors as well. Now something else Webcoms preloaded with is themes. So you can actually customize the appearance of your uh, web terminal. Yes, currently I'm on the dark theme, but you can actually switch that to different types of themes. You have the Dracula, the light, uh, the solarized dark. All these are very similar to the themes you have in VS Code. And I particularly like the dark one, so I'm just gonna stick to that. And that is very cool. And then one other thing I wanna talk about is pricing. So WAP does come with three different types of pricing. You have the free, the team, and the enterprise. Now the free is what I'm on right now, but it's limited to just 20 requests per day on the WAP AI chatbot. So if, which is fine if you're just a light user, just trying it out. But if you're a heavy user, then you have to subscribe to maybe the teams or the enterprise. Um, so you can have much more, more room to make better use of the WAP AI as opposed to just being limited to just 20 requests uh, per day. And that's it for the pricing. But I ordinarily, if you're not a heavy user, then the free should be really nice and should work really fine. The other thing I want to talk about is security. So one of the first turn off for me when I um, installed WAP is the fact that I had to sign up. So when you download WAP and you're trying to set it up for the first time, you have to create an account. And that was one of the first turn off for me when I downloaded it. But now after playing with WAP for a while and seeing all the amazing features that it provides, it actually does make sense why they require you to sign up before you can use it. For example, like the ability to share blocks that I showed earlier. These are things that you can't really share without having some sort of account that, that ties everything together. But however, uh, they do state that all your data is private by default. Uh, so your inputs and outputs are never really captured or synchronized to any LLM or used to train any chatbot or whatever. So they do have claims around, well, huge claims around security. And then finally, I was just taking a look at uh, the company about page and got to know that Sam Altman is actually an investor in WAP. Okay. So all the AI features you do see in here from WAP AI is actually powered by ChatGPT the APIs. Okay, but so to some extent they're bound by open AI policies, but however OpenAI has a policy to store your data for about 30 days. But however, WAP do have claims on their website that they do not use your data for any form of training. So you can be rest assured on that front. Whether you're on the free or on the paid plan, they do say that OpenAI doesn't use your data for any form of training. So if you're concerned about the privacy of your data, well, that can help bring you peace of mind. And really that's it. I'm just looking forward to playing more with this. They have an amazing team here. And it's been a while we saw real improvements in the terminal and the developer experience. So this is something I'm really excited about and looking forward to trying more. So I hope you've learned something from this video. If you have, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.